This video is about electromagnetic waves. The exact physics definition of electromagnetic waves is periodic variations of electric and magnetic field intensity that move through space. The oscillating electric and magnetic fields exist at 90 degree angles to each other and are in phase. EM waves are sometimes called EM radiation. You know these better as waves of light. This is what light fundamentally is. Microwaves, radio waves, infrared waves, gamma rays are all examples of electromagnetic waves. They're all fundamentally the exact same thing. The only difference between a wave of light and a radio wave or a gamma ray is the wavelength and frequency of the wave. You can see I have a picture here of an EM wave with the varying electric field indicated in yellow and the magnetic field in purple. So you can see that they are 90 degrees to each other and they're in phase. So an extreme on the electric field happens at the same time as an extreme on the magnetic field. I actually had a lot of trouble understanding what this diagram meant when I was learning physics. So I'm going to break it down a little bit more before we go on. So first of all, we remember from previous units that larger arrows indicate more field strength. So what's physically happening here is that this is not actually a three-dimensional wave. This is showing the field strength along a one-dimensional path, just a straight line path. So there are certain points along this path where the electric field becomes very large in one direction. That's where it has a very large arrow in one direction. And the magnetic field becomes very large in one direction and other places where the electric field and magnetic field are equal to zero. So this isn't actually a three-dimensional shape. What this is is a representation of the field strength along a one-dimensional line. This is what it looks like when an EM wave moves. I'm going to examine what's happening at that red dot. This is just a random point that I chose along the line to show you the strength of each field at different times as the EM wave moves along that one point. Right here at the beginning, I can see that because there are no arrows, both the electric and magnetic field are zero. The electric field is zero newtons per coulomb, and the magnetic field is zero teslas. And as the wave begins to move through the point, suddenly the electric field becomes very large and it's pointing up, and the magnetic field becomes very large and it's pointing out of the screen. As the wave keeps moving, this is another point where the electric and magnetic field are both equal to zero. And as it keeps moving, this is a point where the magnetic field is pointing into the page, the electric field is pointing down, and then another point where the electric and magnetic fields are both zero. And so this is what the wave looks like as it just continuously moves through that point. So again, this is a representation of the field strength of the electric and magnetic field along a one-dimensional line. This isn't like an actual three-dimensional shape that you can reach out and touch. You can see based on the properties of this wave that it's a traveling wave, not a standing wave. Every point experiences the full oscillation of the wave. And the quote unquote displacement, which in this case means the change in the field strength, is perpendicular to the direction of motion. For both the electric and magnetic field, those oscillations point perpendicularly to the velocity of the wave. So we say that all electromagnetic waves are traveling transverse waves. Electric fields and magnetic fields can both exist in empty space. So kind of like the field of gravity can definitely exist in empty space, electric and magnetic fields can as well. This means that because EM waves are really just changes in the electric and magnetic field, they're the only type of wave that can travel through empty space and do not require a medium to move through. So in comparison, all other waves do require a medium. It wouldn't make any sense for me to say that, oh, I saw a really large ocean wave the other day and the ocean wasn't even there. Like you have to have the ocean to have a wave in the ocean. So every other type of wave requires a medium, but EM waves do not. They can just travel through empty space. So this is how the sun's light is able to reach the earth, even though there's no medium for it to move through. The wavelength of an EM wave is the length between two crests of the electric or magnetic field strength. EM waves can have any wavelength and frequency. And all electromagnetic waves move at the speed of light, which we call lowercase c in physics. You probably recognize that symbol from E equals mc squared, where c is the speed of light. 
and we say they have this speed when traveling in a vacuum through empty space. So the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And because the velocity is always c, all EM waves obey c equals lambda times frequency. And because c is a constant, if we increase the frequency of an EM wave, the wavelength is definitely going to decrease, and if we increase the wavelength, the frequency is definitely going to decrease. The crest of a wave is where the most energy occurs, and therefore if more crests of the wave impact an object, more energy is delivered to that object. This means that waves with higher frequencies deliver more energy per time than waves with lower frequencies, and waves with smaller wavelengths deliver more energy than waves with larger wavelengths. A way that I visualize this is to imagine that I'm standing in the ocean, and there's a series of waves with a long wavelength coming toward me, and a series of waves with a shorter wavelength coming toward me, and I just imagine which one I would rather be hit by. And it becomes clear that the shorter wavelength waves are carrying more energy per time compared to the longer wavelength waves. So if a wave has a shorter wavelength and a higher frequency, it's carrying more energy per time than a wave with a higher wavelength and a lower frequency. The only physical difference between different types of EM waves is their wavelength and frequency, and as a result their energy. We can organize the types of wave based on these properties on a chart called the electromagnetic spectrum. So this chart right here shows me the electromagnetic spectrum. You can see the different types of waves are organized by their frequency and their wavelength. And these are the rough boundaries between the waves. There's no exact agreed upon boundary between some of them. You can see that as you go to the right, the waves have a lower frequency and a larger wavelength, and as you go to the left, the types of waves have a higher frequency and a smaller wavelength. So as you go to the right, there's lower energy, and as you go to the left, there's higher energy waves. Optical waves, for example, actually take up a very small sliver of the EM spectrum compared to most other types of waves. I just spaced them out evenly so they're easier to see. We're now going to go through each type of wave and talk about its properties. Radio waves are the longest wavelength, smallest frequency EM wave. We use radio waves for radio and TV signals, and also cell phone signals and Wi-Fi. Going down the spectrum, we come to microwaves. You can see I've listed the range of possible wavelengths and frequencies for a microwave. Examples of microwaves are the waves that exist inside of the machine microwave, and also radar, GPS satellites, and telescopes. Infrared waves can be used for heat sensors. You can see I've given the range of wavelengths and frequencies. A quick English lesson, the prefix infra means below or further on. So infrared means a slightly lower frequency than red or further on along the spectrum than red. So we're about to come to the optical section. Optical waves are what we can see with our eyes. It's visible light. You can see I've written the range of wavelength and frequencies, and you'll also notice that I've split up the specific colors by the wavelength and frequency. So different colors that we experience are associated with different wavelengths and different frequencies. The capital T in the frequency is short for tera, and the lowercase n in the wavelength is short for nano. So you can see that as you go from red to violet, the energy goes up, the frequency goes up, and the wavelength goes down. Next on the list is UV, or ultraviolet light. We mostly experience these as harmful rays from the sun that we can't actually see. Ultra literally means beyond, so ultraviolet means a slightly higher frequency than violet, or beyond violet. We're now getting into the more dangerous type of wave, like x-rays. An example is x-rays used by doctors. These can also be used to destroy cancer cells, and x-rays are also used in some telescopes. Finally, gamma rays are the highest frequency, lowest wavelength type of EM wave, and therefore they're the most dangerous. They only really come from nuclear reactions and the radiation from radioactive material. Gamma rays have the highest energy of any EM wave and are therefore the most dangerous. So if you've ever heard people talk about radiation specifically, they're usually actually talking about gamma rays radiated off of radioactive material. Electromagnetic waves occur because a changing electric field actually induces a magnetic field, and a changing magnetic field induces an electric field. So because you have a changing electric field, 
a magnetic field is induced. It's created. And because it's created, it's changed. And so the changing magnetic field also changes the electric field. So that's why these can oscillate on and on forever. When you create a change in an electric or magnetic field, you create a self-sustaining wave that travels away in all directions. And there are two ways to create a change in an electric or a magnetic field. So there are two ways to produce an electromagnetic wave. This question has appeared on the IB test in the past, so it's important to understand these are the two ways that electromagnetic waves can be produced. The first way is to accelerate an electric charge, and the second way is to move an electron from a higher to a lower energy state in an atom. The reason why an accelerated electric charge produces an EM wave is that a moving charge is a current, which we know produces a magnetic field from a previous unit. An accelerating charge, therefore, means a current that is changing its value. Because the current is a measurement of how much charge is moving by per second, so if the charge is moving faster or slower, that changes the current. So that change in the current induces a changing magnetic field, and it also changes the value of the electric field because the particle is moving from one place to another. So because you were able to induce a changing electric field and a changing magnetic field, you create an EM wave. And as the electron in an atom moves from a higher to a lower energy state, it releases its energy that it lost as an electromagnetic wave. What I'm saying right now is obviously a little vague, and there are much better explanations of this process. But this process doesn't really appear much more than this when it's tested on the IB test. So I'm going to leave some links in the description to this video that explain the creation of electromagnetic waves in much more detail. But this is all that you'll need to know about EM waves for this class specifically.